This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We begin today's show in Burma, where two journalists from the Reuters news agency have entered their third month in jail. Walon and Kyo Soo were arrested December 12th and charged with violating Burma's Official Secrets Act. They've been denied bail and face up to 14 years in jail. At the time of the arrest, they were investigating a massacre committed by the Burmese military targeting Rohingya Muslims in the village of Indin in September. While the two journalists remain in prison, other journalists with Reuters have continued to piece together what happened in Indin. In a shocking new expose, Reuters reports Burmese soldiers and members of an informal militia executed 10 Rohingya Muslim captives. At least two of the men were hacked to death. The others were shot. Reuters published one photo showing the 10 men lined up in a row on the day of their execution. The ten men are kneeling on the ground with their hands tied behind their backs. A second photo shows the men's bloodied bodies buried in a single grave. The dead included two high school students, fishermen, shopkeepers and an Islamic teacher. The killings were part of what the United Nations has described as a textbook example of ethnic cleansing. Since last year, at least 6,700 Rohingya Muslims have been killed in Burma. Entire villages have been destroyed. About 700,000 Rohingya have fled across the border into Bangladesh. The jailing of the Bernese journalists has sparked international outrage. On Tuesday, the group PEN America announced it'll honor Wallon and Kyosowo with this year's Freedom to Write Award. On Sunday, fellow journalists in Burma took part in a protest. This is Salai Tantzin of the publication The Irrawaddy. The situation is now more obvious that Walon and Kyaso O were arrested because of their investigative report on the Indin massacre. Journalists have the right to access the news according to journalistic ethics. This incident is an abuse of justice. This is also evidence that the media are being intimidated in Burma. Earlier today, the imprisoned Reuters reporters, Walon and Kyaso O, appeared in a Burmese court. As Lon left the court, he said, quote, I can tell you we worked in accordance with media ethics. I totally believe that. We go now to Singapore to speak with Anthony Slotkowski, Reuters bureau chief in Burma. He worked closely with Walon and Kyoso Wo and co-wrote Reuters' new special report. Anthony, welcome to Democracy Now! Uh, we have a number of issues to discuss. The um, two Burmese reporters, your colleagues, have just been in a Burmese court. They face 14 years in jail. And you've just released this explosive expose that they and you were working on. Um, can you talk about um, what happened in Indian and why, then, these two reporters were arrested? Right. So, I think uh, this, this story that Wallon and Cho uh, worked on is, um, you know, it's really important for sort of three, uh, three main uh, uh, reasons. First of all, it's this painstaking, detailed account of, uh, of the uh, execution of these 10 men who were apparently um, uh, picked at random by uh, the security forces uh, held overnight at school, and then the following day um, uh, they were executed. As you said in your material um, before I came on air, they were shopkeepers, they were um, uh, fishermen, uh, two of them were um, uh, students, and, uh, uh, and we also were able to uh, meet their uh, families uh, in um, Bangladesh, you know, who have since fled to Bangladesh. And, uh, who told us um, about them and recognized them on these uh, dramatic pictures uh, before the execution. Uh, but apart from the, 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 this incredibly p p detailed um, uh, uh, re reconstruction of, um, of, that, uh, um, uh, of that execution, w what's really uh, striking in, in what Wallon and Chosu uh, uncovered in northern Rakhine is also not just the depth, but also the breadth of, breadth of, the, uh, of their reporting. So uh, the story is actually not only limited to Indian. It also goes beyond and discusses the dynamics, the, the mechanics of, of this military operation across a wider area. Um, uh, there is reporting from villagers several miles um, to the north of Indian. Um, 
where we're also hearing about uh, very similar um, accounts of how uh, the, the security forces and the Buddhist, Rakhine Buddhist villagers, um, uh, uh, you know, c carried out uh, burnings or um, uh, of, the, of the Rohingya homes, uh, etc. And, and I think the third really important thing is that uh, these accounts are for the first time coming from the the, the people who carried uh, out those acts themselves. Uh, so we, we have insider accounts uh, from police officers um, describing how they uh, actually went about raiding uh, those villages. Villages. We also have um, uh, accounts from uh, Rakhine Buddhists, uh, and not just one or two, but uh, but uh, but many many uh, many thereof. So um, so I think th those are really like the, th the three key points that really tie this story together. And uh, 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 and perhaps uh, you know and this is sort of um, what Wallon and Choso were working on. And uh, we're very proud of their uh, reporting. And uh, uh, and I know from the hearing uh, in Yangon today that they were. Um, uh, very uh, happy with the uh, with the um, impact that the story has had so far. Mm. So, can you talk about the day they were picked up, Anthony? December twelfth. What they were doing, in line with you talking about the particular significance of this report, is that this was a report based on um, uh, admissions by the killers in this massacre. Right. So, uh, Wallon and Choso uh, uh, were meeting two uh, police officers they'd never met before uh, for dinner, uh, as reporters uh, around the world do. They, uh, what we do is we meet people, we, we discuss, uh, uh, you know, uh, things with them. And uh, uh, they were handed over uh, some uh, uh, documents that they never even had a, a chance to look at. They were told, you know, look at them when you get back home. Uh, uh, but before they were able to uh, get back home, uh, immediately after leaving the restaurant, um, uh, they were uh, apprehended. They were arrested by the police. Uh, um, and uh, Wallon was able to send me a, t a text message saying, I have been arrested. Um, uh, and uh, we, we spent the whole night trying to find out more information about them, going from one police station to another, trying to um, establish their, um, uh, uh, their whereabouts. Uh, only uh, several hours later, um, the, uh, Myanmar's, uh, Myanmar's authorities released a statement uh, saying that they, they, they have been arrested. Uh, but even from that point, uh, for about two weeks, uh, they were held without access to lawyers and families, and then eventually um, emerged at a, at a court hearing. Um, uh, like I said, uh, pre pretty much t two weeks two weeks after they were arrested. Mm. Let's turn to your imprisoned colleague Wallon. He briefly spoke to reporters earlier this month as police led him away in handcuffs from a courtroom. The police told us to sign a document about our arrests when we were detained. They said they will add more charges unless we sign the document. So then we see the military putting him in a car and taking him away. Earlier this month, the office of U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres called for the journalist's release, citing the erosion of press freedom in Burma. On Tuesday, Deputy U.N. Political Affairs Chief Miroslav Jenka reiterated calls for the journalists to be released. Let me address the unfortunate arrest of two Reuters journalists, Va Lone and Cho Soe O. The Secretary General has called in clear terms for the release of the journalists and urged the authorities to respect the right to freedom of expression and information. Allow me to reiterate those calls here today. The ability to exercise the right to freedom of expression and information is a barometer for respect for human rights more broadly. Reuters has now published the story these journalists were working on, a deeply disturbing account of the execution of 10 Rohingya men in Indian village, Mongdo, in northern Rakhine state. The Associated Press has also published a report of five mass graves in Gudarpin village in Butidong. 
These and other shocking reports of grave abuses demand our attention and action for the sake of lasting peace and justice. And now I want to turn to Burma's ambassador to the United Nations, Haldu Swan, speaking just Tuesday. Mr. President, the case of two Reuters reporters has attracted much attention in recent weeks. Myanmar recognizes freedom of pr press, and they were not arrested for reporting. The two reporters are charged under Official Secret Act for illegally possessing confidential government documents. Every citizen is bound by the existing law of the land. It is important that the action of <clears throat> a journalist must also be within the bound of the law. In accordance with the judicial procedure, they have full legal rights as defendants in the course of legal proceedings. So that's uh, Burma's ambassador to the UN, Anthony Slarkovsky. Can you respond to what he's saying? Uh, well, um, as we have published in our—in uh, the special report, um, the, the investigation that they were carrying out is what prompted uh, their arrest. And I may just say that, uh, you know, just, you know, in addition, and, you know, I wouldn't want to sort of di directly respond, but, you know, I'll just say that we, we believe that— uh, uh, we may down. have just lost that feed to Singapore, though I think we're going to get him back. We're talking to Antony Slodkovsky, who is the Reuters bureau chief in uh, Burma. He co-wrote the special report with the two imprisoned reporters. They were imprisoned December 2012. Uh, 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 let's see if he can hear us. Antony, you were just responding uh, to the allegation um, uh, that the— Burmese ambassador to the UN said. Right. So, um, like I said before, I think that, uh, well, first of all, the um, the story, um, uh, I hope, shows to the whole world and also the, the Myanmar public uh, that uh, these two individuals were not some suspicious uh, people doing something strange or uh, I don't know, uh, the, the, you know, that the, indeed they were uh, journalists uh, working incredibly hard um, on a very important story of, uh, the, you know, a story of uh, a global importance, um, and that they are not just uh, any journalists, but uh, but journalists of, uh, you know, of the highest order, and uh, we believe that they have done uh, nothing wrong, and uh, and we're confident that the. The, the, the uh, legal proceedings will show that. And I, I just want to clarify for listeners, viewers, readers, when um, we use these words Burma uh, and Myanmar, the same country, Myanmar was the name that the uh, military regime gave to Burma, the capital, uh, Rangoon, they renamed Yangon. Uh, Anthony Slodkovsky is the Reuters bureau chief in Burma, but we're speaking to him right now in Singapore. Um, now, the issue of Aung San Suu Kyi, no around the world as the Nobel Peace Laureate, who herself was imprisoned for years. What role has she played in this? She's the de facto leader, um, even if she doesn't have the formal title of president of Burma. Um, she's been criticized. Many have said she, her Nobel Peace Prize should be revoked. Um, can you talk about the significance of what she is and is not saying, Antony? Right. So I think uh, uh, the 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 ambassador, Myanmar's ambassador to the UN, uh, is obviously a, a, a you know he works for the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs, uh, which is um, uh, uh, run by uh, Aung San Suu Kyi, who um, uh, has several different roles, and one of them is uh, the role of the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs. Um, uh, so I, you know, I, I, you know, I believe that he was speaking on behalf of the government, and I'll just leave it at that. Uh, but uh, you know, I think more broadly, uh, uh, we hope that we as journalists um, at Reuters uh, are here, are in Myanmar to uh, report on report the facts and report on the events. Uh, of global importance. And this story uh, that Wallon and Choso worked on and published um, it contributes to our understanding and to the understanding of, uh, you know, everybody in Myanmar, including, I hope, uh, State Councillor 
uh, uh, Aung San Suu Kyi of uh, in, indeed what, what transpired in northern Rakhine. It's the most comprehensive, most detailed account to date. And for the first time, we're hearing from uh, uh, several um, Rakhine Buddhists, members of the security forces, describing in great detail uh, the uh, the burnings, the lootings, the um, uh, and also that uh, uh, the dramatic execution uh, in early September uh, last year. On Sunday, Britain's foreign minister Boris Johnson met with displaced Rohingya Muslims hours after meeting with Burma's de facto leader Aung San Suu Kyi. Johnson later told reporters he's not sure whether Suu Kyi quote really understands the full horror of what has happened. Yes, the difficulty is that. I to be honest, I'm not sure she really understands the full horror of what has happened up here. I don't think she's been up in a helicopter to see what we have seen today. And really what I was trying to get over to her is the importance of uh, her leadership. I believe in her and I believe in her leadership. I think she's done incredible things in her life. I'm very sad to see what's happening to Burma now and to see the direction the country is going. I believe she can still make a change and make a difference. But to do that, she needs to show a lead, get the agencies in, get the refugees back home in a way that is uh, safe and voluntary and, and dignified. So let's wrap up, Antony Slodkowski. Um, your colleagues uh, have just been in court just hours ago. They face 14 years in jail for exposing um, this latest report. You decided to talk about your decision to release this report as they were in jail. They weren't arrested before the report came out. Um, and the effect that this massacre in September in Indian had uh, on the Rohingya population, more than half a million of whom um, uh, have fled to uh, neighboring Bangladesh. Right. So, uh, when Wallon and Choso were first arrested, um, we uh, focused all our efforts and all our energy on uh, making sure that they are safe. Um, and safety is uh, uh, sort of of paramount importance for uh, Reuters, you know, and, and, and the safety of our staff, both in Myanmar and around the world. Um, after we were able to clarify their legal situation, um, we decided that this is our duty and obligation to the global public to uh, and the public in Myanmar to, um, to go ahead and uh, publish this um, uh, groundbreaking investigation. And uh, Wallon and Cho Soo uh, both uh, very strongly supported that decision. In the end, uh, we're all uh, journalists, and, uh, and this is what we do. Um, uh, and then, in terms of uh, the impact that this uh, massacre had on uh, the Rohingya population, um, uh, well, the, the, this is what we were able to uh, report on under incredibly difficult circumstances. Uh, let's not forget that access to northern Rakhine uh, state and that part of, of Myanmar is, is, is curtailed de facto by the security forces. And it's not uh, you know, easy to, 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 to go there and to be able to, um, to report on it independently and to speak to all the stakeholders. Uh, without uh, without uh, consequences, so um, uh, so what, you know what we've seen at the United Nations um, Security Council meeting yesterday was that uh, a, a lot of um, a, a lot of observers and a lot of diplomats have um, underscored that uh, uh, this report, as many as well as uh, other reports uh, that have come out recently, um, highlight the need for. Uh, um, uh, for a, a sort of a thorough and independent um, investigation into um, into those uh, uh, allegations that are being raised around the world, according according to those uh, diplomats present at that um, Security Council meeting yesterday. Anthony Slutkowski, we thank you for being with us, Reuters bureau chief in Burma and Myanmar. He co-wrote the special report on the thank massacre you, in Indian in northern Burma. On Tuesday, the group PEN America announced it'll honor his imprisoned colleagues, uh, Jia Sou and Hua Lon, with this year's Freedom to Write Award, which will be awarded next Tuesday. The two have been jailed in Burma after investigating the massacre committed by the Burmese military against Rohingya Muslims 
in the village of Indian. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, the budget-busting budget in Washington, D.C. We'll speak with a Congress member about what it means for the American population. Stay with us and others.